So, as you can imagine, many people are remote or hybrid workers now, and as you can imagine, organizing yourself is a really key and fundamental element of doing well at your job. And I think now that we don't have our offices and being micromanaged necessarily, hopefully not anyway, we can really use some hacks and tips and general personal productivity to refine that better. And as you can imagine, a lot of that aspect comes down to managing your Google Calendar. Whether it's having loads of meetings or not, it is a place to manage your time effectively. In today's video, we're going to overview a few different ways that you can use Google Calendar to enhance that experience. Before we begin, please do check out our brand new sponsor for this month, Clockwise. Here's a little bit more about them. So this month's sponsor is Clockwise. Clockwise are doing some really interesting stuff in the market right now with artificial intelligence. And for those who are new to Clockwise, it's a smarter way to schedule that works for teams. Now, flexible meetings are a great feature allowing you to move meetings using AI to work for everyone and create blocks of time that are free in your day. Now, flexible meetings and clockwise help one-to-ones and find the most efficient time and fix conflicts. And you can choose which meetings are flexible and set preferences for how flexible they are. Now, clockwise actually state they run up to 1 million calendar permutations per team to create the best possible schedule for everyone. Imagine a supercomputer playing Tetris to put flexible meetings into the best possible place based on your preferences. We do that every day to unlock time and help foster a healthier way of work. Now, there's also focus time. It's another experience in clockwise helping you to set a goal for focus time every week. As you can know, this can be a huge lifesaver to those deep focus sessions during the work week. And Clockwise will block any two plus hour slot in your calendar as focus time and even help quiet the noise by snoozing notifications in Slack and keeping you in task by syncing with Asana. Now, over 10,000 organizations run on Clockwise, including Reddit, Atlassian, Pinterest, and Netflix. And it's great to have them on as a sponsor. You can check out the link in the description below. So Google Calendar might be your chosen tool for work. And if it is, then these tips are gonna help you. The first of our tips is focusing on the daily agenda. Now, sometimes with such a busy calendar, it's difficult to be able to overview what's coming up in your day. And there's actually a feature inside of settings in the notifications where you can choose to get a daily agenda. The daily agenda is particularly helpful for a summarized email of what's ahead for the day. And sometimes it's nice to be able to land in our email and be able to find that to start the day versus scrolling over to your email and your calendar at the same time and be able to have to manage the two as your sort of stress levels build as you start the day. So having a daily agenda be able to send via email can be a huge time saver. The second element is blocking time. Now blocking time is a technique used by many to be able to focus in on a specific activity during a period of time. And you can use color codes to be able to organize that. But as you can imagine, it's a great way to organize the day ahead. It's actually a feature that Clockwise have with focus time, which actually does it for teams a bit more to be able to channel that focus time automatically for you. So that's well worth checking out in the link description. However, if you're looking to do it manually, you can drag onto the calendar and naturally be able to choose a time, but make sure that you're using your options to select that you're busy so no one books a meeting with you internally or externally. If you're blocking this time, this is time for focus on a specific thing you're working on. So it's really important that nobody interrupts that time, especially when you're trying to get things done. Number three is time zones. Now, something that a lot of remote teams come across is whether they're working with external clients or internal people and folk in the company, they are might potentially be on different time zones. So you can add a time zone to your Google Calendar, and it's a great way for you not only to see what that time zone is and whether you'd be disturbing the person if you're booking a meeting, but also to keep an eye on things like that. Just making sure you're not overloading someone at 2 a.m. in the morning. But time zones can be really adapted inside of settings. You can even have a world clock on with a specific time zones as well to keep you an eye on those time zones and, and where they are, which is really, really helpful. And that's a recommend for a lot of people who are working uh, remotely 
and uh, with sort of other people across seas. Now, number four is change your location. Now, working hours inside of the settings can be accessed to change working hours to suit your needs. A lot of remote folk actually just change it based on how they typically find time in their day, which is great. And I think flexible working times is really the way forward. However, a lot of people are hybrid workers now. So being able to change the location you're actually working at with a click is really helpful. And you can do that by changing it in settings, but then being able to have these all day events of where you're working. And that's helpful uh, for letting people know, OK, I'm going to be in the office. So they might want to book a meeting with you in person or even at home so they don't disrupt you too much, for example. So actually being able to change your location can help with the hybrid remote work really easily. Tip number five is meet with. This is a really cool function that can be found on the left hand sidebar, which can allow you to book a really fast meeting with somebody. It's something that a lot of people glaze over, but it can save you time with regular and routine meetings and typing in that person's email will quickly find them and be able to start creating an event for that particular person. So folks, those were some tips for really optimizing your Google, Google Calendar with remote or hybrid work. Please do let us know if you have any tips and recommendations in the description below, uh, because it'd be great to hear some of your own opinions and how it's worked for you in the past. But as you can imagine, it's just better ways to optimize that Google Calendar for you to work smarter. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you to Clockwise for sponsoring, and we'll see you all in a future video. So do make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you very, very soon. Cheerio.